give the floor to Lucia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, let me thank you, Justina, Dalila Coviello, for the great organizations, for your collaboration, for uh, making possible this uh, uh, virtual training. Um, luckily, I couldn't join you on site, uh, but I'm, I'm very, very, very happy to be anyway. So here somehow today and to give my contribution to your successful, uh, your already successful events. Uh, just a few words about uh, so welcome everybody. I know that the list was a long list of participants coming from different countries. So thank you for for um, choosing my training. Uh, we, I, I will try not to run out of time because I know that it's Saturday and that so anyway, staying in front of a screen for a long time is, is difficult. And uh, but anyway, I will give you um, at the end of my slide presentation, which of course is available. There is also my email, uh, my contact email. So uh, for further questions, uh, don't feel free to, 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 to write to me uh, or um, I will be more than happy to, to help you. Uh, just a few words about my my uh, about me so uh, i'm working at the university um, of torino have been working uh, there since uh, 2000 uh, 2000 but uh, in the last six seven years so my focus was uh, uh, at the, uh, uh, in the framework uh, within the context context of our doctoral program or doctoral schools my uh, framework, framework was my my focus was um, career development for PhDs, and so I was I have been organizing different activities to help PhD uh, better prepare their next professional steps, strengthen their skills, and. Uh, um, explore the job market, uh, find an adequate position. So, and track, and I'm also tracking, constantly tracking their career. But, uh, so I think that I, I, and I could also share my, uh, my, my work, my job, my, my expertise with other professionals in Europe. Some of them are here, are speakers today. And in particular, also for the Univers University of De Lyon. So we are, we have, um, <clears throat> we are sharing a, a joint uh, uh, program focusing on uh, the valorization of PhD. Uh, so uh, the, the focus today is transferable skills for researcher and uh, uh, just uh, just a few words. So I am um, this is so my my, web, my webinar is about hard and soft skills, future skills, transferable skill, and then we will, I will give you uh, more details. Uh, we are we are going to to, to give you a. I'm sorry, I have to. Uh, sorry, just a minute. I have to unmute my. Okay. Um, we we will try to. I will try to give you an overview of transferable skills, their relevance uh, in the workplace, uh, in the job market, focusing on some of them. Uh, that's to say communication, the most important, I think, project management, management, grant acquisition, and fundraising, how to commercialize your idea. Um, I don't know, I can, okay. Uh, why are soft skills so important nowadays, uh, transferable skills? Uh, because the nature of researchers' work in the 21st century is different. Uh, so both in academia and outside academia, that's to say in companies, international organizations, Early career researchers or young researchers need to be capable, communic expert communicators, they have to know how to manage projects uh, as well as grant man acquisition. So they they have to be able. They ha they they have also to be able to commercialize their idea, uh, manage and manage stressful uh, steps in their research. So they 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 need more skills. They already have, but they have to become aware of these skills to better know. So they really need a robust set of transferable skills. We are going to analyze to, in, our, in our training today. Um, 
you know, PhDs so traditionally tradition is regarded as the product of a, uh, an original piece of research conducted in three years and um, in the laboratory. So, but it is also something else. You have to think, repackage it. To, you have to think it in terms of transferable skills you developed during your doctoral training, because this is the added value of your PhD, which you know is often poorly understood in non-academic context, as, I'm, as well as I know in Italy, in Southern Europe, uh, in Northern Europe it's different. In, in Southern Europe, uh, companies uh, do not always appreciate or maybe um, know exactly uh, what is the added value of an early career researcher, of a PhD, and so we have to, to better so, uh, uh, explain to, to other contexts what a PhD is. So we have to think, to, to repackage it in terms of transferable skills, which is the focus of our today's training. You already have, you developed, or you also developed in your, during your PhD. So this, this pool of skills uh, shared by, by PhD, regardless of their disciplinary area, disciplinary area, can be used in different contexts and help, really help, helps you build a, a very competitive profession, professional profile. Um, as I have already said, uh, the, the, the potential of PhD is really poorly understood outside of academia. And sometimes PhD themselves are not so uh, aware of all the, of, of this potential. And so they, they are not able to sell, to sell it uh, during a job interview or when they are preparing their, uh, their next move. Uh, I'm sorry, there is a pop-up here. Uh, I don't know. I am asked to, to Vladimira Dekanov is asking me something. I have to can maybe I, I will answer later. If you have questions, maybe you can write them in the chat, but maybe we can I can answer at the end, I think. Otherwise, yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead with your presentation. We'll go, go take questions at the end if we have time. Um so to increase your the level of your employability. Uh, it is vital to raise awareness of these skills uh, among doctoral graduates, but also among employers, uh, as we have seen. Uh, before starting, so this, is, this is a preliminary, preliminary uh, overview. Um, maybe, Justina, can you launch the, 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 the poll? Because yes, I prepared some questions, just to know the if... First one. Um, I'm launching, so everybody, uh, if you go to slido.com and put the uh, EU Talent Fair and choose the virtual training, there you will see the first uh, question coming in. Uh, so I have to go to slido.com. Uh, slido yeah. Let me share my screen for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you will get back to the presentation. So here it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you familiar with the topic of our webinar? And uh, not at all partially aware, very familiar. You can, you can, you can uh, reply. Okay, we're getting first uh, answers oh, so. in. They are all familiar with uh, partially aware, partially. So they are they are partially aware, and this is what I already uh, this is what I I see when I'm working with our PhD students at the University of Torino. They are aware, but not completely aware, and sometimes they not they are not able to get a job interview or maybe to get their dream job because they don't know how to sell all these uh, all these uh, uh, transferable uh, in skills. So we can there is another question also. In your opinion, which skills are transferable? Reply giving one example. 
Okay, let's see if the people who said they are partially aware, <laughs> how partially are they aware? Partially, so now they, it is more difficult to give a, a, a real, a, a, a concrete example. Concrete example, exactly, exactly. Communication skills, it's correct, it's right, because this is the skills, time management, okay. Communication again, yes, written, I would say oral and written communication, presentation skills, project management, organizations, time management, okay. We have problem solving. Problem solving. Critical thinking. Empathy. Empathy. People skills. Analytical thinking. Okay, yes, yes, people skills. Now we are we are attention to details, critical thinking. Mm -hmm. I would I will add other other transferable skills during my presentation. Okay, we can go to the other question. Let me to take a bit of time for people to reply to this one. How do you highlight your transferable skills during a job interview? If anybody has any ideas, don't hesitate to put them in. Have a, by giving an example. How do you highlight your transferable skills during a job interview? Appropriate communication by giving example. This is very important. Overall appearance. Okay. Storytelling, very. Uh... Okay, storytelling. Describing experience. Okay. There are so many transferable skills. Now we are going to see, you we will see how many transferable skills you, you, you have. Maybe you don't know, you are not completely aware of. In which way an employee will, which function transferable skills, skills could be an, an asset to an, an employer? Yeah. Okay, the questions are getting <laughs> more and more uh, difficult, uh, hopefully. Uh... Everybody can uh, pitch in, and if not, don't worry. I think by the end of the training, you will have more uh, clear vision. Yeah, during during the training, we will have. Uh, having a creative input. Having a creative input, having a creative quality of work. Academic background. Mm. Well, academic, I would say how you present, because the problem is that uh, you you have to be you have to convince your uh, the employer if you want to be hired. So uh, this is crucial. So maybe now I'm going I'm going on with my presentation for various collaborations. Now I'm going yeah. on with uh, Justina, just stop and we go back to my slide so that I can go on with my presentation. Thank you. Yes. I can have to you have to reshare your screen again. I have to share my screen again. Yes. Allora, can you see the content? Okay. Can you see it? Yes, perfect. Okay. So just a preliminary uh, presentations of, of the, the, the subject skills. Uh, 
so according to researchers, to research is conducted in Harvard and Stanford, Harvard and Stanford uh, only 15 percent of your career, keep in mind, career success is provided by your hard skills. So hard skills are technical skills, your specific skills developed during your doc PhD. But uh, the difference is really made by soft skills. And, and unfortunately, soft skills get little respect, but will make or break your career. So you, you maybe you, you, you will get, you will invite it for a job interview because of your CV, because of your, of your technical skills, which are obviously very important, but then to be hired, you, you also need uh, to, to, you have to demonstrate that you have soft skills. Uh, these, these skills uh, um, relating to the ability to perform certain tasks, uh, these are interpersonal skills. What, what are, so the soft skills can also be named uh, life skill, personal skills, non-technical skills, transferable skills. Are all these abilities, uh, teamwork, networking, time management, these are all some, some I gave you some example. They, are, they that relate to how you work, how you interact with other people. Uh, so, so communication, teamwork, uh, this kind of interpersonal, interpersonal skills. So employers need need uh, employee with these skills, you know, uh, which are very are very very hard to, to 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 teach. But this kind of this these interpersonal skills are are crucial for long term success. Uh, so job specific skills, technical skills, it's very they have to be put in your CV. But put emphasis also to this kind of skills. Uh, this is an example. So, uh, time management, for example, flexibility, communication, integrity, effective communication, open mindedness, creativity, problem solving, critical thinking, adaptability, willingness to learn, empathy. So, I would say that the soft skills are personal habits and traits. Uh, shaping how you work on your own and with others, whereas hard skills are technical knowledge gained during your PhD at the same time, in the same way, uh, or maybe during any life experience, uh, including your career or education. So soft skills correlate with some terms for a very close meaning, life skills, emotional skills, intelligence, social skills, um, and so they are also associated with emotional intelligence, uh, shaping because, but it is important to, to, to show that you, you, you have this kind of skills, uh, because it means that you are able to manage people. Uh, maybe you have also, you are a leader, uh, these skills characterize the relation with other people. Uh, this, this is why soft skills are also, are, are also named people skills. Because they relate to job performance and career prospect. prospect. Sometimes I can move, I can move again my slides, I'm sorry. Uh, they facilitate interaction and communication with others. So in, in the job market, so employers want employee with this kind of of skills, uh, and they also include persu persuasion, active listening, delegation, leadership, because this kind of skill are how people relate to one another. And uh, to sum up, I will now I, I would say that I prefer to use transferable skills, and I can also explain why, because the skills you you. you you have PhD have these skills. Now I'm going to explain how to, to identify them. You have just to learn how to translate them in another language to be appreciated, to be understood in non-academic context, so outside of academia. So 
to sum up, transferable skills are all competencies acquired by early career research and doing their doctoral training and not necessarily necessarily related to research. So transferable skills or soft skills are skills you have learned in one place, but that you can use the, but you th that you can be used in another context. And you can acquire them in different contexts of so holding lectures, supervising students, running workshops, but also in family, social interaction, volunteer work, hobbies. So these are these complementary skills which may represent, might represent the added value during a job interview or when you are preparing your CV. Uh, what transferable skills does a PhD have? Uh, you have, you, you PhD have all these skills. So innovation, research, analysis, autonomy, change management, work ethic, flexibility, risk mitigation, project management, budgeting, speed of, le speed of learning. So PhD uh, have this, uh, these skills, otherwise they, how can they do a PhD? So it is very, very important to sell yourself to potential employers by identifying and relating these transferable skills to the job you are applying for. Uh, you know that, that so they are looking, so companies are looking for people very good at problem solving, uh, very good at managing time, at managing people, able who are able to work independently because during your PhD, you had to work, you have to work independently, but at the same time in team, maybe in the laboratory, you have to work in team. So uh, you have to be able to adapt, uh, you have to different contexts, to be flexible. What PhD, so transferable skill, what PhD can do? So PhD, the problem is, so I'm asked during my presentation, during my training, or during my coaching to our PhD in Torino, but how can I identify the skills? How can I put them in one page CV? Because this is very difficult. So you are able to present and organize large amounts of information in a clear manner. You can do, and you know, this is important. They, your employers, are, companies are not interested in the focus of your research because maybe they don't know exactly, uh, your, your, so specifically your, your research project. But they are very interested in people able to present and organize complex information in a clear manner. And you do, you did it during your PhD when you, you were preparing, while preparing your PhD. You are good, you are able to prepare written and oral presentation. Your PhD students have to do this during their doctoral training, communication skills influencing interpersonal skills anyway. So uh, when PhD, when they have to defend their thesis, they have to be able to negotiate maybe with the jury, creating and presenting ideas. So uh, the PhD th a PhD thesis is also an original uh, piece of research and innovative because you have to bring innovation in your research project. So team working, you, you were working, you had work, PhD working team in the laboratory, mentoring and coaching. They, I'm sure that you, during your, your training, your doctoral training, maybe you, you worked with other, uh, as a mentor, as a coach for, for other students. So uh, what can, PhD can do, these are all are transferable skills, soft skills that you can really clearly translate in other and bring in other context as an added value and which will facilitate maybe your, your career, your career development, analysis and this kind of skills uh, are also a, a proof, that demonstrate that you are not a student but you are a researcher, that your PhD was also a professional experience, not only an academic experience. So you are able to analyze complex data and presence of emerging conclusion and concepts. You are questionnaire design. You are, you are experienced in quality or quantitative analysis. PhD do it, most of our PhD doctoral students. You are able to plan a project and deliver it to the uh, agreed timelines. Uh, 
So companies are looking for people with disability and writing a PhD means that you are able to plan and deliver your thesis to a agreed timelines, ability to work independently, but also with the supervision of someone or a supervisor. Problem solving, during your PhD, you, you have to, to solve problems. You are able also to interact with colleagues from diverse professional backgrounds, especially for interdisciplinary PhD. So what PhD can do? Initiative and self-reliance, project management. You, you, you have project management skills because you design, a, during your PhD, you have to design a, a thesis, a research project, uh, grant application, knowledge of research methods and technologies beyond the project, innovate, innovation. So your piece of re your research project has to be innovative. You see how many skills. Uh, I think that I hope now, hopefully now you are becoming a bit aware of all these skills you, you develop during your doctoral trade, training. Initiative and self, well, you have to take initiative in your, because you, it is true that you have a supervisor, but you have also to work independently. Um, creative, you have to be creative. Maybe, so you have also, during your PhD, maybe you, are, you start to uh, develop entrepreneurial skills such as commercialization, patent knowledge transfer, which become relevant or crucial for your next professional step. Just a, a, I would like now to, 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 uh, to give you some more examples, some maybe slides is necessary uh, to, to, uh, to put emphasis on relationship building. Uh, build and maintain relationship, use the diplomacy, give and receive constructive criticism, be tolerant, respectful. So these are skills for our job market. Um, and these skills also help build teams, uh, successful teams. Uh, maybe during your PhD, you could develop an international perspective because you, you could work within oversee colleagues, uh, and this is an added value. You, you, you have to, to put it in your survey or maybe mention it during your job interview, that you are able at building relationship, at, at building network. Strategic planning, strategic planning, this is an important skill for, our, for today's job market. And the employers are interested in people able to be strategic, uh, because success depends uh, on long-term planning. Uh, and science PhD have the know-how to act upon information and plan multiple research projects based on constantly changing feedbacks. Flexibility, adaptability. Well, employers, companies prefer candidates capable of improvising, able to find a unique solution, able to adapt to new challenges. Uh, anyway, so PhD deal with multiple projects, require different lab equipment. So you, you, you have already do it, uh, done it in other contexts. Uh, you are adaptable and flexible you, because otherwise you couldn't write your PhD. A few words about, so an overview about future skills, because uh, for, for doctoral students at the end of their doctoral train, uh, training, uh, they have to learn how to explore the job market and what are the, 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 the future skills. Uh, there was uh, the Univers Technical University uh, of Berlin together with other European university, um, before the pandemic, uh, implemented a project uh, called the uh, Mindset Project, um, and it was pro and it, it was on uh, it aimed at uh, um, identifying future skills, and this is a short summary. Uh, you see, trending 2020 and 22. Analytical thinking and innovation. What are future skills? Complex problem solving, critical thinking, active learning, leadership and social influence, emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving and ideation. So these are complex, complex skills that PhD doctoral students have. And what are future skills? Are skills 
which are becoming significantly important for professional life and for social participation in, in the next five years across all industries. So technological skills, digital citizenship skills, classical skills, uh, uh, creativity, entrepreneurial skills uh, will become even more important in the future. So they are required. Technological skills. So I think that digital skills, you know, will shape new professions. So you, 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 you must be equipped with them. Uh, technological specialist knowledge across all industries. Digital skills that everyone needs in professional life and for participation in society in the future including digital literacy, handling complex amount of data. So once again, PhD are able to handle complex amounts of data. Classical skills, entrepreneurial action uh, will be required. So professional in your professional profiles, professional profiles with entrepreneurial skills, especially in a, in a, in a job market changes so rapidly, uh, classical skills are crucial. Uh, another question maybe uh, I'm always asking is how can I identify, how can I identify all my transferable skills and how can I put them in my CV? There is a tool, our partner from Association Bernard Gregory, which are in a way uh, who are here today, developed a few years ago a tool, uh, DocPro, uh, with, which is describing, this is very helpful because it, it is describing the 24 core competencies developed during our doctoral training. And this is useful for recruiters who can gain the better understanding of the potential afforded by, by doctoral training and also to head of doctoral schools, PhD coordinators, career development facilitators, uh, PhD holders. So these tools can help them speak the same language. So un unluckily, especially I would say in Southern Europe, PhD are still invisible to employer. So they need them because of their ability to do research, which means collect, meaning collecting and gathering information, information processes. They are able to innovate. They are very creative. Uh, so you see, uh, employability arises from this kind, from these competencies you have, uh, and these competencies are a mix of intellectual, social, and organizational. They are a mix. Uh, once again, soft skill you can take them with you anywhere in the company and outside of it, and they are power skill, durable skills, human skills. Uh, Uh, you can use it, uh, you can always use, and they are helping you to collaborate with other people, to communicate effectively, to manage, successfully manage people. And they are, this kind of skill are really at the art of the hiring process, uh, helping you maintain relationship, uh, express your idea, contribute uh, to your overall effectiveness. And they really can boost, they can really boost your career. Uh, communication, problem solving, team orientation, time management, goal setting, conflict management, accountability. And it, it goes without saying that these skills are, uh, are incredibly valuable to employers because they show that you are, that you would be a good fit for them. They can also demonstrate what a candidate can bring to a role, uh, etc. Uh, these are the top 13 job skills employers employers want now, and they are they are all transferable skills: continuous learning, time management, decision making, collaboration, emotional emotional intelligence, creativity, adaptability, change management. Uh, I. Um, I would put a stress on continuous learning. So in, in a world, in a, in a job market changing so rapidly, you, you please take care, please consider your professional development, your professional growth, your lifelong learning, never stop learning, but PhD are used to learn, to learn quickly also. They're also able to learn quickly. Uh, other job skill employer wants now are coaching, a coaching mindset, project management, 
knowledge of new social and digital media, so digital skills, artificial intelligence. Uh, so I prepared these slides if some if you if you need them, just as a, just to remind you what are the most needed transferable skills. So this is the same list put in another way uh, to 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 put emphasis on these skills, relationship building, organizational skills. But a PhD needs organizational skills, otherwise it wouldn't be able to to complete his his research, his doctoral uh, um, thesis. Leadership, uh, commercial awareness, strategic planning, problem solving, adaptability, uh, and employers are looking. Employers are looking for these kind of abilities. Uh, are looking for people able to communicate effectively in a variety of situations, show initiative, creativity, and integrity, and having a good work attitude. Uh, because this kind of skills, together with your specific skills, your technical skills, can improve productivity. And how can you highlight your soft skill in a job search? Uh, maybe you can also maybe take a look at LinkedIn profiles for people who work at the company and see what skills they have. You can talk to people who already work in a position or as a company you are interested in and ask them which soft skills are most vital to success. So how, how can you highlight and maybe identify the skills you need for a certain professional job? I also prepare, I've also prepared some skills, some, some more slides, maybe we, we don't have time now, uh, on uh, communication skills. I think that communication skills uh, is, uh, are, are, are really very are fundamental. Um, science has a very important thing to say about uh, some of the biggest, biggest problems of society, climate change, medical care, advanced technologies like artificial intelligence. So it is important. Scientists um, can no longer stay in their ivory tower. They have to learn how to uh, communicate to a non, uh, uh, a profane, a non, and a non scientific public and audience this uh, knowledge. So they need to learn to tell their own story because society needs their expertise, their, their perspective, their evidence based problem solving. Um, they, a researcher, early career researcher, need to know how to publish their research in newspaper to reach non academic audiences. Uh, to be familiar with social media channels such as Twitter, which can serve as a tool for communicating researcher ideas and finding. Uh, so there, there is really a need to communicate, and uh, researchers need communication skills, this kind of skills, uh, enabling them to publish in international journals, present uh, at conferences in English, apply for funding to national and international bodies, communicate with a wider audience. And without these skills, uh, I would say that researcher and research institution can find themselves at a competitive disadvantage, uh, affecting even grant income. Uh, so invest in communication skills. Uh, writing skills because we have to introduce to research article, literature review, peer review. Project management is another uh, important uh, skills because we have to, and PhD are able, they have to organize effectively their work. Uh, this is an integral skills for everyone, especially those in the research community. But I think that project management is important both for the for, for researcher uh, stay in academia and for doctoral and PhD graduates move into other sector because they, they will have they have to they will have to, to, to manage projects. So you need guidelines to follow in order to ensure that your project is properly set up, to set up a good start. And you have to know how to set up a research project, monitor, monitor it, report on your research project, making the most of your research project. And uh, I think that this, you see that 
to be very good at project at managing a project is important in, in different sector. Uh, maybe to familiar to familiarize with finance system and financial process and so on. Um, grant acquisition. There are some more slides you can. We, we, we will run out of time if grant acquisition is another important skill because you, you cannot survive if you're not able, if you're not, if you don't know how to, to acquire grants. Uh, so learn about, you need to learn to know how to learn about the principle of developing multidisciplinary collaboration research project. Uh, where to find funding bodies, how to convince them to fund you how to put a winning proposal together, how to approach the preparation of the proposal effectively. So uh, I'm going to stop because we are at the end. There are some more slides about fundraising. I prepared them uh, and com how to commercialize uh, your idea. But so, you know, the, the topic is, uh, um, this is only an, an overview. Uh, I, I prepared different more slides if some some if somebody is someone is interested in uh, acquiring more information, uh, also you will know you will see that there are so many similarity between entre entrepreneur and researcher because they are both innovative. You see, they are both you are speaking the same language without knowing it. Uh, they are both they they both they they both have to to take risk. So and entrepreneurs. They have to take risk, and even when you are doing your, you are conducting your research, you have to take risk, because uh, uh, you you are in. A, if you want to be innovative, um, are there any questions? Because um, not in the chat for now, but maybe if uh, somebody has a question, can raise their hand. We can stay a bit uh, longer. Uh, thank you, Lucia, for this interesting uh, uh, presentation. Indeed, uh, I think it's very important for uh, for doctoral students, PhDs, uh, to underline their uh, transferable skills to employers. When you go on the interview, you can face somebody that really hasn't done uh, a PhD, hasn't done this kind of uh, job, and they do not understand actually the realities of. Uh, of what is it concern and what skills do you acquire doing this uh, even as a stress uh, resi resilient during the PhD because it's not just uh, it's a it's a it's a stressful also period uh, for people when they yes. are wanting to publish their articles uh, etc um, and also very important that you highlight communicating in science because uh, communication skills as you as you mentioned we are it's uh, important to know how to communicate outside of academia, but also uh, to the general public, how to translate your results in a, in a words that uh, uh, the general public will also understand. So uh, very important skills indeed. Um, I'm just looking uh, at raising hands, but I do not uh, see any. I'm looking at the chat. Uh, anyway, I would like, if I can interrupt you, to conclude, because I think that uh, the, the good news that, that with the take on message, the research entrepreneur, it is a text by Bekinis, best practices for successful technological entrepreneurships. Any good scientific researcher has both the capacity and most of the critical skills necessary to become a good entrepreneur. So you see how many top alternative careers you have. Uh, many of the skills that researchers have are almost di directly ap applicable and valuable in a startup and innovative enterprise. So uh, researchers can also become uh, start innovative startup as investor. Uh, you, as investor researcher, offer the vision and the scientific and technological foundation, but the day-to-day -day operation in the company will be carried out by skilled workers. Both good researchers take the initiative and are good innov in innovators. The level of in innovativeness in both worlds are the same, but the outlook is different. So, researchers prepare the invention, which are then taken over by entrepreneurs to turn them into valuable innovation. This is so, we have to bridge the gap. So. Commercial, learn also to commercialize your idea. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. And so feel free to write me uh, to me if you need some more information and so whatever. 
Thank you, Lucia. And since there are no more questions, we can just uh, finish almost uh, on time. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Have a good lunch. And for those uh, uh, who registered, we will see us uh, at 1.30 for the next uh, training on the core competencies of uh, PhDs. So uh, thank you, Lucia. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a good, uh, good Saturday. Okay. <laughs>